How many are sensing breakthrough coming through in their hearts in this place? God is moving in this place. There's a young man here. His name is Austin, and we wanted to share his story. You know, the Bible says that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Is this your first time doing this? Yeah. Well, I'm going to share a little piece of the story because the story encouraged me. I believe it's going to encourage some people in this room tonight. Thank you. So around three years ago, I uh, graduated from Ohio State. Go Bucks! Yeah. And I thought I was doing, you know, God's plan of getting my business degree. Had my company car, my corporate job, ready to go. And we had vacation planned two weeks after that graduation down in Florida. And on the very first day, I went out as any other day on the beach for a swim. And I dove into a wave and I hit the bottom. I had a sandbar. And I instantly knew that something was wrong because as I laid down uh, consciously in the ocean, I realized I couldn't turn to my left and I couldn't turn to my right. And as you can imagine, I didn't know what was next other than that this was my time. But my brother, he, uh, he saw me and he pulled me out. And as I laid there on the beach, I didn't know where this was going to go. All I knew is that I couldn't feel, I couldn't move. And as doctors did tests, they came back and they told my family and I that I suffered a spinal cord injury. And what they told us about a spinal cord injury is that it's different than any other injury because that it's permanent. And so as I laid there, unable to breathe because I had a ventilator, a machine that was pumping air through me and I was unable to talk, I was unable to move, I was unable to feel. They told me that this was going to be my reality. But my family and I knew something right away that for man, it was permanent, but for God, it was nothing. For God, believing in God and having our faith, we knew there was nothing that he could that he couldn't do. So let me ask you something. So Austin, the doctor said, basically, what did the doctor say? He said, did you, what's the diagnosis? And you were on a, go ahead and share that. So I was, again, on a ventilator. He, not moving. They said you would. Not moving, not feeling. I couldn't feel anything. Couldn't move anything below my shoulders. Couldn't breathe. And they kind of said. You know, that was going to be your new normal, right? Like this is, you'll never feel again. You'll never breathe. He said he'll ne never breathe on his own again. You'll never Basically, you were going to see laying on your back with the ventilator pumping your lungs for you. And it's been three years since, and it said if none of this came back within the first year, that he was never going to get it again. So, if you guys can look closely at him right here. Do you see in his chest right here? There's no more ventilator inside of there. He's breathing on his own. This is the first of the many miracles. So... How long will they take out the ventilator? I'm sorry, how long did it take? How long, will, yeah, how, yeah, how long did it take to get off the ventilator? It took seven grueling months to learn how to breathe again. And on that seventh month when they finally took it out, I can't tell you how happy. Oh man. <laughs> and how blessed God was to give me that ability to just taking a deep breath and no, I'm doing it all on my own. Do you understand what the power that is? Understand this. They set something over him. You'll never breathe again. You'll never this, never this, never this. But there was, that was man's plan. 
you decided to believe a little something different that that no matter what man said you weren't going to come in agreement with that then he said later he was taking a bath tell me what happened when you when you had no sensation then all of a sudden what happened all of a sudden I, you know i'm laying in bed and they're washing my legs and my body and they get to my feet and the furthest part of my body the very furthest tip they rub my toes and I'm like, they can't be. That's, that's a feeling I felt before. And I, uh, I asked them, which at this time, again, I can't talk. But I'm trying to get their attention, you know, yelling. You couldn't even talk. Think about that. He, at that time, he couldn't even talk. And they can tell I'm trying to tell them something. So they get where they can read my lips. And I tell them I can feel that. And they do it again, and they start to realize that I'm feeling my toes. And then I told him about it. my parents, they weren't there at the time, so they come in, and the nurses tell them, and they don't, have, they don't believe me. So they grab a pillow, and they put it in front of my face so I can't cheat. <laughs> and then they grab my toe and wait for my response. And we did this at least a dozen times <laughs> until finally they, they knew it was exactly how I called it. That's my right pinky toe. <laughs> Come on. So, <laughs> graduates college, there's an interruption in his life. Can't breathe, can't talk, can't move, can't feel. It's three years after this. Instead of the first year, if none of that would happen, you couldn't do it. He's feeling. He's breathing. He's talking. Let me tell you this. Here's, here's my whole thing about this thing. Sometimes we don't celebrate the little things. But little, there's little things happening in this room tonight. God has shifted people's hearts in this room tonight. And you got to be able to see just like Austin saw. I'm not the same person that I used to be. I know the enemy is telling me when I walk out of here that I'm going to be the same person. That I'm just going to fall back in the same trap. But I'm not going to believe what he's whispering in my ear. I'm going to believe the report of the Lord that if any man be in Christ, Christ. He is a new creation. All the old has passed away, and behold, all things are new. I love, this is what I love. He's seeing it inside here first. Tonight, identify with who God has called you to be. Let's say a quick prayer over here. Father, let's reach your hands. Let's reach your hands towards Austin because we believe, and I love this. He believes that he will walk again, and I guarantee you, the Bible says that any man who, if you believe, all things are possible. So extend your hand towards Austin. Father, we thank you for this moment. I thank you, God, that, God, even though it doesn't make sense, and even though, God, it's very painful, but it's not just Austin represents a lot of people in this room tonight who in their heart feel they can't move forward. But God, I thank you that tonight you're giving us a new picture of ourselves. The picture that the enemy has painted over our lives, God, is now being erased and it's a clear chalkboard, Father, and you're beginning to write the heel of the Lord. That God, the people who rise up the head and not the tail. God, people who will, who will rise up and share the goodness of God. Even if the testimony is small, we're going to keep believing, God. And I thank you that today that Austin, God, we declare and believe that he will. God, the best is yet to come and the future's brighter because he went through this, God. You're going to make him better because of it. You're going to make him stronger because of it he's going to impact more people because he went through it than when he had, if he had never gone through it all in jesus name we declare amen give austin a round of applause thank you austin